Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Cal Marquis. I'm a partner engagement specialist at Bywater Solutions. Um, so basically what that fancy title means that I just keep our partners happy and informed. Um, so I came from working in public service at public libraries for about eight years. So um, patron engagement, which we're going to talk about today, um, is something that's very near and dear to my heart. So I'm also joined by a couple other of our team members. So Jesse and Bill, if you just want to quickly um, introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Jesse, and I'm the Director of Library Sales and Outreach at Bywater Solutions. We'll be keeping an eye on the chat and QA as they come in throughout the webinar. Hi, and I'm Bill. I'm the uh, Aspen Sales Consultant, and uh, we're excited uh, for you all to join us today. Thank you, guys. Um, also, we'll be recording this, so we will send that out afterwards if you want to share it with anyone else at your library that couldn't be here today. So just before we uh, jump into Aspen, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Bywater and how we got here today. So let's get going. All right, so the scene is 1982 and E.T. was in the movie theater and thrillers on the radio. And our two co-owners of Bywater, uh, Nate and Brendan, were meeting for the first time at the age of three. So this relationship um, really blossomed. And in 2009, um, we signed our first library partner on the Koha ILS open source, and it was uh, Goodwin College. And since then, um, Bywater Solutions uh, had launched. We're going to fast forward a little bit to 2015. We were named one of the uh, top 5,000 fastest growing companies. We added support to a uh, LibKey kiosk management. Um, and then in 2017, um, in just a few short years, we were supporting 1,000 libraries worldwide and we had grown to a team of 20 people. So in 2019, that's when we get Aspen in the mix. Um, we were joined by Mark Noble, who is uh, the lead developer of Aspen. And he had been developing at that point, working on with uh, Pika for over 10 years on discovery products. So we're just really fortunate that he decided to make Aspen and it's it's just so amazing and user-friendly. So um, today we're supporting uh, over 2,500 libraries worldwide and Aspen is growing rapidly with over 450 libraries. Um, and now the Bywaterings at Bywater, there's 35 of us in over 22 states supporting our partners. So a little bit more about our staff. Um, over 85% of us have our MLIS or MLS degrees. Um, we have, and more of us uh, than that have library experience in one way or the other. And we even have some that are married to librarians. So we're very embedded in the library community and we're really proud of that. So um, Aspen, uh, we take that knowledge uh, from working in libraries and being experienced in libraries. Um, and we take that and drive our goals and our direction when we're talking about um, our support models and our development models. So uh, when developing Aspen, we always take it back to these four goals. We wanna maximize patron usage for all library materials, which is not just books. We know that libraries are so much more than just books. We want uh, to really promote your e-resources, your databases, um, events, everything that you guys got going on. Also uh, complete integration with your underlying ILS and e-content providers. So it is um, ILS agnostic. And um, we want it to work seamlessly with things like Overdrive and Hoopla um, and all those great things that you guys subscribe to. And of course, we wanna make it easy for your patrons to use or else why would we be here? <laughs> and the same thing goes for staff. We wanna make sure that library staff, it's not like a time suck or it's impossible to use and customize. We really wanna make sure that it's user-friendly for both uh, external and internal patrons. So how does Aspen accomplish this? Let's take a look. Okay, so before we get started in all like the nitty gritty technical stuff, I just wanted to show you a couple of different um, interfaces just so you get like a look and feel of the layouts. And just to preface it, I just wanna say um, that these were all customized by libraries like to meet their preferences. So you'll see things like maybe menus are in different places or links are in different places. They were all chosen and they worked with our Aspen implementation team um, to set that up to what met their needs. So if you see something, it's probably completely customizable. So this is Ajax Library in Canada. 
we have Arlington. So you'll see they use like really awesome hot pink. I love it. Um, Carnegie, which is one of our newest uh, go live uh, libraries, very calming. And then this one, which we'll get to at the end is just like completely different, but they were all built off of Aspen Discovery. So as you'll see from like the first couple that I showed you, um, a lot of them are utilizing what we call browse categories, which are um, these highlighted collections at the top. So these are all tailored to meet your community needs. Like these were created by library staff. So for example, um, in Ajax, like I said, they were in Canada. In July, they were celebrating Canada Day, Indigenous history, grilling and chilling. They have a, a section about graphic novels and let's take it outside. So we are finding with our library customers and their patrons that just like physical library displays that you're putting up in your libraries, um, the things that are featured in the browse categories are flying off the virtual shelf. So um, we had recently did a case study with Ajax um, Library, and they found that since going live with us on Aspen Discovery, that their circulation on items increased 198%, which is wild. So if, if you're able to feature something that maybe is not moving as quickly as you want it to, or um, things that are maybe are new or special, like your video game collection, it's a great way to put it in a browse category. And library staff can easily create these in various different ways, um, but some of the easiest is just right from a general search, or they can create a list and then turn that into a browse category. Um, and we're just really finding that through research and just you know personal trends and customizations that people love this like very visual appealing um, Netflix like streaming type uh, of um, interface. So I just wanted to kind of like click through so you get an idea of what some of these look like. All right, so I'm just gonna go and dive in and do um, a search. And uh, Jesse will share the, um, the case study that I was referring to about Ajax um, in the chat too. Let's jump over to Arlington and just like the ever so popular Harry Potter or Harry Potter. <laughs> As you can see, um, Aspen knows that that was misspelled and it went ahead and said showing results for Harry Potter. So this is something similar to what we see in a Google search. Um, the, we're trying to make it as easy and recognizable um, as most people are searching other things. So typically people are just used to like a one search, one keyword search. So our relevancy um, algorithm, we're really proud of it at Aspen. Um, it's based on a number of different factors, including things like popularity and your own circulation numbers. So if you were to search Harry Potter um, and some other different ILS or um, discovery platforms, you might find that it doesn't even show up like on the second or third page even. You might see things like Harry Potter spells cookbook and other kind of like spin-offs that have been in the last 20 so years since it's been out. So um, I just wanted to show you how our records are grouped also. So as you can see, you can see all the different editions that are available of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So just by quickly scanning, um, it's very visually laid out nicely. So I can see, nope, read, checked out, checked out, checked out. Oh, I have an available copy all the way at the bottom. It's a large print, large type. Maybe this type of collection doesn't get checked out as much at your branch. Um, I don't care what type of format I get it. I just want to read this like now. So this is great for me to know that I can go ahead and pick this up. Um, also, it's really cool is if you are an audiobook user, an ebook user, and your library subscribes to things like Overdrive or Cloud Library or Hoopla, I can preview, even though um, it's not available, if I'm logged in, I can start listening just to like a little clip of the audiobook or I can preview um, an ebook. And I'm doing this just all right from my main search. And also, I just wanna mention with the record grouping, um, it is automatically done for you based off logic, but it's nice that Aspen, we try to toe that line of balance between 
not having to do a lot if you don't want to, but also if you have staff that want to go in and make customizations, you can. So maybe there's like a common title that's popular to your library or your compute community that you want it to raise higher up in the relevancy, your staff can go in and make those adjustments. Um, similar to things like um, the movie A Star is Born is a, I'll show you that really quick, um, is a remake. But in 2019, it was a very popular item that was checked out at a lot of libraries. So even though it's the same title, Aspen knows not to group it together. It's, it's separated out oh, maybe I wanna see the older version or maybe I wanna see the newer version. So it's really nice and it's intuitive. Um, I'm gonna go back to Harry Potter. And as you can see, um, when I do spell it correctly, uh, some popular and suggested searches will pop up. All right. And I had mentioned briefly lists before. I just wanted to touch on what I was talking about is, from a search, I can add to list. Um, this is great for either a staff member, say I wanted to celebrate Harry Potter's birthday, I'm looking for things, I just hit add to list, I add it to Harry Potter's birthday list. Um, if I have said as a patron that I'm reading all Harry Potter's this summer, I can also just create a private list for myself that's my to read list. Okay, I'm gonna pop over to more info and just show all the other information that's available um, if you really wanna dive deep down into a title. So I love this. This shows you clearly the different types of, like the different titles in a series in a nice carousel. It also shows me other titles like Harry Potter if I'm already interested in this title. If your library subscribes to things like Novelist, you can integrate um, all of that content right in the item record and you can also pull in things like reviews right from Goodreads. Okay. And it's just crazy. There's like so much information just on this one page, really. And there's just think of all the other information that's available for your patrons. All right. I'm going to pop over to Carnegie. I love how calm and chill their nice teal blue is on their website. And I'm just going to talk about a different aspect of um, Aspen that I really love. So say I'm learning a language this summer. It's going to be a busy summer. I got to read all the Harry Potter books. I'm going to learn Spanish. I'm going to search for Spanish. So you'll see that there is this thing at the top of the page. So we call it a placard, but I just like to think of it as a tiny little billboard for free that your library gets at the top of your catalog. So the library has decided that they want to highlight their transparent language online database. So I'm sure that your libraries have a lot of expensive databases that you subscribe to that you're always trying to promote or tie in um, to a patron. Um, I know I like in my previous experience, our SAT and ACT books would never return, they'd be written in, they'd be never be available, but we subscribe to Learning Express Library. So if I was to, if I was to have that database set it up so that when somebody searches SAT, they see, oh, I can get an online SAT book available right now. So you can choose for your library and your subscriptions, whatever is important to you to highlight. So this was created by a library staff member, it links, links out to the database and it can be tied to whatever keywords you want. So Spanish, maybe if I type in language, they've determined for themselves what their users are searching for to find this information. And, and to be clear, it doesn't have to be a database. Um, it can be an external website. Um, it can be like, for instance, during um, COVID-19, we had some libraries that if you searched help, if you searched job, um, if you search for medical information, it might take you to your external um, county health department, job board, anything, like I said, that's really impacting your community, you can change and adjust. So it's, it's really nice for that. And also, I found another one the other day when I was digging around, and I just want to show you guys how pretty it is. If I search romance, they have a local 
author, that they're doing a local author program and they made this placard and I just thought it was like the cutest thing. And if even if you search author, it comes up. And if I wanted to register right for this program, all I do is click on it. And I just think as a patron, that would be just amazing to promote different library events and resources. We have another um, different aspect uh, that works similarly, but we like to call explore more. So you'll see this little box that will pop up when you do a search result, when you get a search result. Um, it, it is under the second item in the search and it'll vary by library. So here, um, Carnegie has integrated their events. Um, they have external web pages they've linked. And I just want to pop back over to our Harry Potter and just show you how Arlington's looks different. Um, theirs, they have several Harry Potter lists that they've made or um, games, kids lists. So this is going to look different for your library based off your collection, um, your lists, websites, um, external websites that you've indexed. We have some that um, they have a, a robust like genealogy and archives. So you might have a picture um, listed there from your archive collection. So the explore more feature is just another way to direct your patrons to all that your library has to offer. Finally, I just wanna pop over and talk about this one because it looks so much different than the other ones that we kind of talked about so far, but it's built off of the same platform. It's all built with Aspen Discovery. So I know as working in a library, people would get confused all the time about like library catalog search versus website search. And what some libraries have chosen to do is they've used Aspen Discovery as their main sole website and catalog. So if you can see, this is just meadvillelibrary.org and it takes you right to this interface. So Meadville Public Library is a part of the Crawfish County, Crawford County Federated Library System, which is one of the many library consortiums that we support. So um, they have all of their other libraries in the consortium linked right on their website, right on their main page. So if I pop over to Benson, you can see that the like look and layout is different. So they're all sharing the same resources, but they still kept their own individual branding and the look that would make sense to their community. So here they're highlighting their summer reading program. It links right out to a calendar, um, a book club that they have upcoming, um, they've created all of these websites within Aspen Discovery. So a library staff member created all of this. So it's really great. Um, you really don't need any coding experience at all to do it. Um, if you do know a little bit of CSS, you could make it really robust and as customizable as you would like, but you absolutely don't have to because I don't know anything about that and I can drag and drop a page in like no time. And you can incorporate, as some people are incorporating calendar, videos, um, sign up forms. If you have a program that requires registration, you could drop that right in. And just gonna go back. Um, you can also integrate some of those other like browse categories that we saw on the other websites right into um, like a carousel format. So we'll help you through imp implementation decide what look and feel you want for your system. All right, Jesse, do you have any questions? No questions yet. All right. Well, I just wanted to say that like, there's so many other things in Aspen and I just kind of touched on, I was thinking back on my days in, on the public floor um, and what I know from helping uh, patrons and uh, staff members navigate um, different like website versus catalog. And I just thought that these were the main things that I really wanted to hit on today um, that people and customers are using the most often. Um, we do have some other 
um, upcoming webinars that get more kind of like nitty gritty into the different um, Aspen discovery process. So um, in August, we have a webinar with Addy of our implementation team. And we know that impl implementation can be a scary process and we do everything in our power to make it even fun, I will say. Um, so she's gonna uh, do that webinar and talk about the steps for that. Um, in September, Jesse's just gonna do like a step back and do just a general overview of Aspen. And then if you want to hear me talk again, I don't know if you're sick of me now, um, I'll be back in October to get drilled down deeper into the event promotion that I, I briefly touched on, promoting some of those e-resources and electronic resources um, and e-content. And if you're interested um, in more, something more detailed to your needs and your customization, um, this was just very general, but obviously, as you could see, every library we worked with had different preferences of like what they wanted. Um, Bill would love to speak with you and set some a customized demo up um, to chat about what works for you. Callie, there, do you have Jesse, you want to add? Yeah, we do have a question. Do you want to talk just like high level about um, what the implementation looks like? You know, the process from like the kickoff call, you know, to, to getting the library live? Sure. Do you, do you want to do that or do you want Bill to do that? Do you want me to do that? I'm, I'm happy to, or if you want to. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so if your library decides to move to uh, Aspen Discovery, um, the first thing we usually do is have a kickoff call. This is a great opportunity for us to meet your librarians and staff members and for you to come speak with the Aspen implementation team. During this call, we go through a quick timeline and just get acquainted with each other, you know, what products you have and, and get used to kind of the workflow that we'll be working with throughout that period of implementation. We work on a timeline that'll take you between an eight and 12 week um, goal of getting your library live. We'll also set a time period for you to meet weekly with one of your Aspen implementation leaders. Um, during those weekly meetings, you'll go through the back end of setting up your Aspen administration, connecting to your ILS, customizing your configuration for administrating, um, setting up your users, making sure that you have your themes and branding pulled in for your uh, system. If you're part of a consortium, you know, getting ready to set up all those different branches and locations uh, in your consortium. Our Aspen implementation team works directly with your uh, staff members to get them comfortable and really empower them um, to feel comfortable to go in there and, and set things up. As we go through that week by week meeting, um, you'll also go through setting up a lot of the promotional things that you saw Cal talk to you today about, like the um, placards and some of the um, images that you've seen um, within Aspen itself. Working up to the um, end of those weekly meetings, we will go through a patron empowerment uh, webinar where we will take your frontline staff and members of your library uh, community uh, staff members, uh, where we will show them how to use Aspen Discovery, getting them comfortable with the interface so they can train your patrons and get them comfortable with finding exactly what they're looking for in the system. After that training session, um, users will have the ability to go in and play around and get really comfortable with Aspen Discovery because we want that first day of kickoff to be a success for your users um, and for staff to really feel comfortable using it. And then of course, up to that go live day where your patrons can now explore Aspen Discovery. <laughs> 